Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Dry bones are rising. Dry bones are rising. Dry bones are rising. Rising up again. Dry bones are rising. Dry bones are rising. Dry bones are rising. Rising up again. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we stand together in the presence of God, everyone? Please, wherever you are, I'm requesting that we stand together in the presence of God. Can we stand together, please? Thank you. Just for a few minutes. Let's honor the presence of God. Thank you. the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you so very much, Holy Spirit. Just would you kind help me say good morning or good evening, Holy Spirit. Just say good good evening, Holy Spirit. Just say good evening, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yvonne and I, we welcome you to this Glory Shift Conference. Recognize the presence of my friend, Joan Brewer from ESE. Thank you. You are blessing to us. Recognize the presence of our pastor, Barnabas from Zim. What a joy. What a surprise. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Madame, thank you so very much. What a joy. Recognize the presence of uh, Pastor Felix, the one who was leading us into a deeper worship. Thank you so very much with the Madame. Thank you. Pastor Felix, such a blessing. Thank you so very much. Recognize the presence of uh, my friend, my elder brother, Vagamba. Uh, he, every time when I talk about him I remember a lot of things and he just brings me joy that uh, he's, my, he's, he's my brother, he's my elder brother he's Wagamba, Pastor Victor Silinga and the wife, thank you Wagamba, thank you <laughs> Hallelujah Thank you We've got uh, Apostle Philip J. Moya Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you for coming, so We've got Pastor Lukundo Taposa. Thank you so very much. And we've got Pastor Martin Mwale and the wife. Thank you so very much. Bless you, thank you. Thank you. I recognize the presence of the men and the women of God who are here present. I'm grateful and I'm humbled to just see you here. It shows that we are the body, one body of Christ. Thank you so very much for coming. I am very much humbled. Thank you. Thank you. Now, allow me to, to invite the, the friend of mine as well, a brother, who is about to give us the word from Nigeria, Philip Kefas. Brother, Apostle, Philip Kefas, come on, put your hands together for Philip Kefas. Thank you.
Hallelujah. 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 Can you give the Lord a shout? Give the Lord a shout. Thank you so much for having me around again. We had a nice session in the morning. It was a session, a minister session. It was a time where secrets were shared. And um, whether you like it or not, there is a reason why Jesus Christ speaks in parables. It was very intentional for the people that are not serious not to understand. Because the things of the kingdom are sacred. The Bible says don't cast pears upon swine. Sometimes it's challenging when you speak words and it fall to the ground. It is not supposed to fall to the ground. And anytime Jesus intends to speak he is conscious enough that a heart is willing to be receptive. Because until the word of God is received, it will look as though God has lied. And sometimes the reason why we do not see God at work in our religion is because the word of God is not given preeminence. And oftentimes men are looking for what they want to hear. Their ears are itching. And so Jesus Christ will always speak in parables so that only them that are willing to understand the more will come and ask, Master, what meaneth this? And oftentimes the people that are present may not even understand and they don't see the need to ask and it wouldn't profit them. But only them that went further again to begin to ask those ones are the disciples. Those ones are the ones that really want to do something with what is being communicated. That is to say that the other people that came and had it were not interested in doing anything in keeping the kingdom business. And no wonder their life eh, became a waste in time. Among the believers of time past, there are some that are referred to as the Berean Christians. These are Christians that you can't deceive them just like that. They can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Why? Because they are more interested in checking and learning again to see whether what it doesn't matter how mighty you are, what you speak does it tally with what God is speaking? And if it's not current with the emphasis of God, they discard it. Maturity in this kingdom is how much more you can be able to decipher and to discern. And if you cannot be able to discern, you see. You'll be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And the things that matter to life and godliness, you will not make it an utmost priority. You will major on minor things and you cannot be able to major on the major things. What I'm just trying to let you understand is that the sessions that always make men are like those sessions where Jesus Christ taught the beatitude. You cannot be able to remember many sermons that Jesus Christ preached, but beatitude was a sermon that everybody needs. It is the attitude of a believer. What a believer needs to actually subscribe to as his attitude is the being of a believer. There are not too many of such kind of sermons in scripture. All the sermons Jesus Christ preached to the crowd, you can't remember them. Is that true? But you can remember the beatitude. But the beatitude was not a sermon that was preached in the valley. It was preached on top the mountain. So when Jesus Christ saw the multitude, normally it's when you see the multitude that you try to, <laughs> but Jesus Christ, he ascended higher. He began to climb the mountain. So there are people that actually were in the valley. And they say, where is this man going to? When he's done going, he will come back and preach here. But he went upon the mountain. And the Bible says only his apostles and his disciples follow him yonder. It was when he went up the mountain that he began to teach them the attitude of a believer. It is in the same vein that in the days 
when the Holy Ghost was supposed to come, eh? There was a prophecy spoken that they should tarry in the upper room until they are endued with power. But mind you, how many people really went to the upper room? It was a Passover. And mind you, in the temple there, there was feasting going on. That means there were so many people in the under room. Everybody was around. They were gallivanting and dancing. In the midst of the celebration, they forgot that there was a commandment given unto them to tarry in the upper room. And only then that could hear the clarion call assembled at the upper room. And you see, it is only them at the upper room that partake of the avalanche of the spirit. The Holy Ghost was not generous enough to come to them on the under room. No. His jurisdictional operation of how much more it can influence the earth at that moment. When the Holy Ghost left heaven and came upon the face of the earth, it came and consolidated itself in the upper room. And only them that were at the upper room assembled together were the ones that partake of the Holy Ghost. And when you study the people that were able to align to that, there were so many among them. It was not only the apostles. The apostles just fulfilled the quorum. There were quite a lot of them. But you see, so long as the twelve apostles, his quorum was not completed, they need to be able to cast Lord. And they have to replace Judas with Matthias before the Holy Ghost came. But mind you, when the Holy Ghost came, as long as you are together with the apostles in the upper room, you have aligned yourself. And because you have plunged into that covenant, you are partaker of the dividend of what God intends to do with the apostles. And when the Holy Ghost came, not only the twelve partake of it, and everybody that understand that it was a clarion moment, became a partake of it. I want to let you understand that a season has come upon us. And there is a numbering that is going on right now in Lusaka. And only them that are numbered by God can bear relevance in the time to come. It goes beyond gifted faith ministry. No. He he gave that little understanding in the morning. He said, gather ye my people who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. He said, call forth a solemn assembly. Because there are times, it's not all the time eh, that they recruit soldiers. Is that true? There is a time when they open for recruitment. And until you apply at that moment that they open for recruitment, you are not permitted to be found in the training ground. You cannot just wake up and say, I just want to go to the camp. No. There is a time that they open for recruitment. And if you refuse to take advantage of that avalanche of opportunity, where they advertise you have to wait for another season for them to open again. The same way you can't decide to be admitted to school at any time. There are times when they open for you to be admitted. And if you can't apply that time, you have to wait for another session. I don't know whether you want to wait for another session, but I want to announce to you that an avalanche has been opened. It's high time for you to plunge in here and press through the mark and ensure that you are recruited and non part among this army. Don't just be like the multitude. No. As Jesus ascend the mountain top, ascend together with him. Because the Lord intends to do a thing. And let it not be told that when God is done doing it, you are not part of it. Let me tell you, whether you like it or not, the time a portion for this program will come and go. Yes. But you see, no matter how you pray and fast, I think after tomorrow, the meeting is over. But is your life change? Is your life transformed? Did we encounter God? Or did we just smoke going to a program as usual? <laughs> I can't count the number of programs I've attended. But I can count the number of times I've encountered God. And it is not because the program was not well done. It was simply because your heart was far from it. You just wanted to be like the multitude. You are not interested in understanding the parables. Are you picking a body? Is something shifting within you? Because sometimes if nothing is going on with you, it's not because something is wrong with God, but everything is wrong with you. It's just a hard check. God, we have to help us. See that in our strings and blades. 
Um, the time constraint here is heavy. I trust God that God is going to really help us. But I will still emphasize that as you are there, hearing me be praying. The reason why I always say this is simply because I know that if you cannot hear the voice beyond the microphone, you won't have an encounter. You must be able to hear the Holy Spirit brooding upon you beyond what I'm saying. Have you been to a meeting where the minister is speaking something else and God is teaching you something else? Because sometimes I may not be able to have the odd chance enough to communicate what God intends to speak to you. But we can be able to create the atmosphere sufficient enough for you to tap into the frequency where God is communicating. It is from that frequency that you can be able to lay hold of what is meant for you. Because you are waiting for a time that will say your name is Kena. Your name is. So how many people would I do that to? If I press into the gift of the spirit, I can attend that. But you see, it can't benefit everybody. Because the problem is utterance. And that is why Paul keep on asking and say, pray for us. That God should be able to help us so that we can be able to communicate that which is burdened within us. Because it's a challenge now for me to speak to each and every, see as plenty as you are. For me to ensure that what I'm speaking is resonating in your heart. But if you are conscious enough, there's a frequency that God is communicating. If you can tap through that frequency, God will speak to you what I'm not even saying. And it is from the bowels of that that you can go back. And even when the program is over, eh, you continue to travel. Hannah did not go somewhere at Shiloh. Do you realize that? Because Shiloh was over. But for her, it wasn't over. If it was left for Shiloh, Hannah would get somewhere. Because when Shiloh was over, everybody went back home. She realized that the service was not over unto her. She picked a body and remained. And she began to cry. The priest himself, who is the preacher, could not understand the hunger. How can a woman remain after service and is still crying? God, give me a son and I will give you a prophet. It was not what the preacher taught her. It was what she heard from the vistas of the frequency in heaven. What are you hearing God saying beyond what I'm saying? I'm trying to let you, I'm trying to do her check so that you don't waste your time in this conference. I told you, program don't change men, only an encounter change men. And an encounter sometimes may not be a product of a program. I don't know how many programs Saul have attended, but when he was on his road to Damascus, Jesus appeared. He said, You can't kick against the books. At that very moment, he said, Who are thou, Lord? You are waiting for me to say a mystery so that you write. Is that how your life has been reduced to? Have you had anything from God beyond what I'm saying? What if I'm lying? How can you vet what I'm saying? How can you ensure that the utterance is coming from my lips as spirit guided? Jesus said the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Is he building you? How many things have you written in your note? Has it become anything? It's because you have not received anything from God. When I go to a meeting, I try to hear beyond what the speaker is saying. Do you know why? Because God can never be taught. God can only be revealed. And the revelation of God comes daily to men that are hungry, desperate, seeking and searching for him. Bible school can't teach you God. Your mentor can't teach you God. Even two need to actually be taught God. God can only be revealed. And it will take it will take God himself to reveal himself to you. The time came, they began to ask. Who is this person? And it is normal for human beings to look for a reference. Say, it's like Elijah. He's like John the Baptist. He's like this. He's like Isaiah. Jesus knows that they are confused. He now asked you, who do you say I am? At that point now, it was not what he, he, he had taught them. He wanted them to receive a revelation. 
and he just realized that all his apostles are darkened of receiving counsel from heaven. And none of them could be able to decipher who is Jesus. And yet, they have been with him. And at that very moment, I don't know who taught Peter that protocol. Because Peter knew that they needed help. Because all of them began to speak things that were so shocking and surprising. And Peter received supply from heaven. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That is not what you can factor in doctrine. It has to be something that was aided by God. And Jesus looked upon him. He said, Guy, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven. That means to let you understand there are things that flesh and blood can reveal. That means most of the things we'll be saying may be paraventure revealed by flesh and blood. But what are the things that are revealed from the Father in heaven? Because it is upon the strength of those things revealed from the Father in heaven that you can say, Thou art Peter. And upon this revelation, I will build my church. The church of God is not built by human wisdom. It is built upon a revelation of God. Say, I will build my church and the gate of hell will not prevail. You are the church of Jesus, but you can only be built by the revelation that is fashioned within your spirit. The reason why you may not be able to survive the times coming is because there is not, nothing guarding the strength of your faith. We are coming upon a time that only they that know the Lord, they are God strongly. That will be strong and can do exploit. I've been to a meeting with, hey, people went down. Hey, they went down. After you wake them and say, what is righteousness? They don't know again. What does it mean to love Jesus? They don't know. Why? Because all what they were looking out for was what a man can do. They were not conscious enough to look at what can God do. And until you come to a point where you know what God can do in your life, eh, you'll be wasted in time. Churches have been able to organize themselves as a structure. An organization where we have a boss, we have a king, and we have darkened people and hindered them from having a relationship with God. And it is out of the product of that relationship with God that God can reveal himself to them. And until we bring you to that point where you can be able to know God the same way our G.O. know God, we will be weak as a church. Because oftentimes we can't be guaranteed that anybody know God apart from the general overseer. In the day the general overseer is not around, church has scatter. See that they may know me. That they may know you. The one true God and Jesus whom you have sent. And that has been the labor of the apostles to come to a point where they establish men in Christ. If your life does not bring profit to God, it's not because something is wrong with God. It's because everything is wrong with you. You are the one that thought the service is over. This service will be over. But are you going back with something? Because the same way God appeared to your spiritual father, appeared to your pastor, appeared to your... is the same way he has to appear to you. The same way God encountered... Many years ago, they not appear to me. say, Philip, the same way I encounter you, is the same way I will encounter your generation. Our fathers, I apologize, but many of them have lied to us. The secret of ministry they gave to us was not their secret. Pupit did not make them. It was the secret place. Caves mountain tops those times of pain suffering and trials they were the things that formed god inside of them they learned obedience by the things they suffered and now they tell you if you shout breakthrough if it didn't happen something is wrong no there were times they shouted it nothing happened but nobody will tell you that one today we have churches it's good there is ac there is light there is stage light there is is this really the secret of ministry? No. 
because many of them climbed mountain tops and they prayed for days fasting they refused to eat they were praying for hours they don't even have a reason there was no a prayer point a body was fashioned within them he said give me lusaka or i die give me zambia or i die give me this country or i die they were willing to give up their life totally and today we think we can find god with two hours and one hour no a body must be fashioned within you beyond the time available for this conference and it's what you do in that your secret living that will guarantee this strength in the public. Because after you live here, if you think the service has finished, eh, you will not become anything. If Hannah only depended upon Shiloh, Samuel will not come. And you see, Israel will be lacking in a priest and a prophet. Because Samuel was both a king, he was both a prophet, he was both what? A priest. No man like that lived. Then he was able to now ordain David into the same oppression. Because David also became a king. He became a priest. He became a prophet. Those are no natural men. Look at the process of how Samuel was better. many colors like joseph is that not true and you back him at the back you say are you hungry but you see the making of a giant the making of a kingdom taker the making of a warrior is not conducive it's not what you do with stage light and ac they are good but eh, how our fathers encountered jesus eh, was in the cave called adulam and only samuel and david understood that David said, when my father and my mother rejected me, the Lord was my God. Hannah did not really have a son. It was God that had a prophet. Because Samuel would have been born either by Hannah or by anyhow. Because Samuel is a prophecy fulfilled. It's not, it's not about Hannah. Hannah became just like Mary. He said, a virgin will give birth to a son. Whether Mary refused, Jesus will be born. Yes. The same way that even if he refused to do the will of God, God will raise another person. You are not that important. The will of God is constant. Men are variables. So even today, if I say I don't like God again, God will raise another person to show me that he cannot be lacking in men. But you see, it is a dangerous thing for God to be looking for who to use and you are available and yet you are not usable. Ha! It is a dangerous thing for God to come to Lusaka and come to Zambia and he's looking for a man. And he look at all of us and say, they are not qualified. With all the church activity we are doing. <laughs> you don't understand my cry. Because you see, the crown come and it look upon you. Do you know how when Samuel went to select king in the house of Jesse, he saw many men, caliber of men. Many of them, the crown fit them very well. And when he want to fix the crown, you see, it's not as if they don't like the crown, but the crown eh, rejected them. And the crown rejected them not because it want to reject them, but because God rejected them. And somebody that never desired to be a king like David was the one that God said, mm, there is another one there. So, ah, it's also that one too, part of what we are considering. He said, God does not look at the physical appearance. God look upon the heart. We are upon a time when God is still recruiting men. But if all what you do is religion, you will never have a voice in this time. I'm telling you the truth. Never. became so worse eh? that even when another king was already in city I saw God still rejected the king that means God can still reject you I 
you not tired of the way your life is? Move around Lusaka. I think today we went to Nigeria restaurant. We'll move here, we'll move here, we'll move to Showground. I saw people we went to one place. I saw it was a club. Is it those people in that club that will deliver Lusaka? You think if God is looking for a man, he will go there. If God go to that club, it's because he cannot find men among us. So God will look outside whether he can find a soul that has a prophecy. Because God looks for who to use and he cannot find. He now reach out to the most sincere of them. Somebody that is sincerely wrong, like Saul, God reach out to him and encounter him. Because he saw that Saul was at least zealous and he was very, very deliberate about service. And he reached out to him and said, Come, let me encounter this one. It was because the people that are in church, in the synagogue, we are just doing church as usual. The people that will bear relevance in the time to come are people here. Eh? That this service is not going to be enough to satisfy the hunger within them. It's only the people that after this service they go back home and they cannot sleep. They don't know why they are just crying and weeping. Appetite for food begin to die. Because there is an inclusion criteria and there is an exclusion criteria. And let me tell you the truth. When you study all through Eh? Only men that walk with God are remembered. Anybody that do not walk with God is not remembered in time. This earth has so many challenges. This earth is full of too many people to be remembered. Only men that have a walking with God can be remembered. Existence is not the purpose. Fulfillment of purpose is the goal. I don't just want to exist. No. When you see us cry daily to God for God to help us, we have seen the other side and we know that in time, there is a reason why we are shut out from eternity into time. How can I come to time and yet not be relevant in time? It's a waste. The Bible says the whole of creation is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And all these sons of God are still waiting for creation to do, to manifest. Lusaka will remain the same until you rise. Israel will have been without a light if Samuel did not rise. We do not know eh, about most of the children of Penina. Penina has so many children. I don't think whether you know one. Do you know anyone? But we know of somewhere. Because any child that is the son of Omer will forever be remembered. You may not have 13 children. Your neighbor may have 35 children. You can have only one. And that one will be enough answer to the Philistine. In the days when men like Samson rose, Samson became enough answer to the Philistine. In the days when Samson rose, the Israel don't need an army because the whole army of Israel is useless. In fact, the army will be afraid if Samson is not there. They will have when when Samson appears, he's enough answer to the Philistine. In the days when men like David rose, he was not schooled as a soldier. David was not a soldier man. No. But a man that is helped of God is a man that can become a warrior. You can't fight a man that God is helping. God will fight you if he doesn't kill you. In the days when Goliath rose and began to roar, Every army ran away. Every army ran away. And the king tried to lure them. Come and fight Goliath. Because Goliath are about to be unleashed again. In the days when Goliath will enter inside Lusaka. Every pastor will run. Only men that have a standing place in Zion. 
he come and say i have seen the bear i have seen the lions i have slain many say this uncircumcised philistine shall be like one of them if you are not schooled in the spirit if only title is what you have in that day you will run away in the day when goliath came he boasted all the army of israel ran away the king began to cry because his kingdom is threatened and they have to beckon upon david when david came david did not come in the in the strength of he come in the name of the lord say you come with me with your shield with your arrow with your deeds but i come in the name of the lord and let me tell you the truth nobody believed that david can bring down goliath I don't even want to believe that even David himself believed that he can bring down Goliath. David's confidence was not in anything. His confidence was in the Lord. That if the Lord has delivered him from every situation till now, Goliath is just one of those situations. And he's trying to do that to restore back the glory of Israel. Why? Because he feels his time defied the house of God. In the days when Goliath cries, who will stand for us? It was the cry. You see, are there no prophet in Israel where we can consult that he went so bad that even saw the king have to go and look to a necromesa and went to a witch of Edom and asked, can you be able to look for Samuel? Because Samuel is dead now. And because Samuel is gone, no prophet again, no priest again, nobody can hear the voice of God in the whole land. And the king become confused. Our kings are confused. They need prophet. They need priest. In the day when the president of Zambia come to you and say, what is the Lord saying, pastor? What will you tell him? Because I'm sure you have not even heard the Lord. Because in time past, kings don't joke with the voice of the Lord. Kings can't even trust their decision. They trust in an oracle. They trust in the voice of the spirit because they know that this may be the word of man but this word of man is ruled by spirit only them that can hear the sound beyond time can hold in time is your ear connected to the spirit or you are just living your life with the senses that are carnal are you moved by what you see and what you hear or is there a transmission in heaven that you can hear We are at Lusaka Love FM, Radio FM. They have a frequency that they broadcast. If you are not connected to that frequency, you will not hear us transmitting that day. But there are many other FMs in Lusaka. Many radio stations. So you have to tune it strategically. You must add point something, point something, else there will be no communication. It is the same way that heaven communicates upon a frequency. If you are not fine-tuned and right, you cannot be able to hear. And if you cannot be able to hear, you will not be able to hear the sound of danger. See, if the trumpet make an uncertain sound, how can we know? How can your life be governed if you cannot be able to hear the voice of God? The voice of God is your greatest asset. But let me tell you the truth. If you can't hear the voice of God, you are going to die in time. Because the difference between life and death sometimes is just a voice. God is still looking for man. Because Goliath are coming. Somebody asked me a very funny question. He said, what if the stone, eh? <laughs> he said, what if the stone that David swing to Goliath did not hit him? What will happen? <laughs> If the stone that David shoot towards Goliath did not hit Goliath, what do you think will happen? This is how some of us, our life is. You are trying to confront a giant that you are not even sure of your stamina, your standing place in Zion. So you shoot the devil and the stone did not hit him. And now, when he faces you, you know you are God.
men of old is not gimmicks it's not try and error our fathers never went out without having a standing place in god in the days when they comforted daniel in babylon eh? there is nothing they did that could stop daniel nothing he was too sure those Hebrew boys they say heat the flame let heat the furnace heat it again heat it again there was no fear in them at all because they know the Lord will always come for his own say the eyes of the Lord the running to and fro upon the face of the earth looking for them that are ease for him to strengthen say oh king we will not bow when they put them in the furnace the Lord came exactly when Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, eh? if the Lord did not come, he could have been gone. And let me tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, when you look at the process that made David a mighty man, it was a strong process, a strange process. There is no the story of David without the cave of Adullam. Because David was running for his dear life and went to the cave of Adullam. It was in the cave of Adullam that God teach his finger to war. He taught his hand to war. And it was not a try and error. Because you see, if you read the book of Samuel, the Bible says men that were in distress, men that were indebted, men that were feeble. Just like the way you may feel that your life is, you are not important. You are, I don't have anything. I don't have any life. Me, I'm nothing. I mean, I'm not rich, I'm poor. Those are the criteria of the men of David. These are the mighty men of David. They started from men that were nothing. In fact, their life failed. And all of them gathered before David. And when they came to David, David said, I can't help you, but I know a God that make men. I know a God that can help men. He said, follow me. All of them follow him to the cave, Adullam. This is what our fathers are supposed to do. Our fathers are supposed to take us to the same place that guarantee how they encounter God. Because that's the mentoring. That's the discipleship. You show us exactly what you are doing. Except you are not interested in making the people to last. He took them to the cave of Adonai. And the Bible says all of them that gather before David. David make mighty men out of them. We cannot remember too many people. But everybody that gathered before David became a mighty man. It will only take a mighty man to make you mighty. It will only take a strong man to make another one strong. Sometimes who you follow matters. If I'm not sometimes, all the times. Ha! I don't know what David did to those people. But by the time you begin to read the book of Samuel, you are going to see that David established a nation. And according to the scripture, David fought about 60 something battles and he lose none. How can a man fight battles for this much and lose no one? That man is not a man, he's not a normal man. There's an enablement of the spirit. It was David that said that you see, a king is not delivered by the multitude of his army, that there's only one king but God, that a king must rule in the fear of the Lord. So David knows that there is a supply of invisible hosts. It's only David that knew how to fight with heaven host. What you thought that brought down Goliath was not a stone. It was a host that pushed him down. The same way that what really brought down Jericho has nothing to do with their dancing around Jericho. It has to do with the invisible host of angels that 
push down the wall down because you see the wall of jericho is like a cube even if you push it like this it will still be a wall so angels have to sit upon those walls and push them down do you know that there's a supply from heaven upon you we supply we, we survive by the supply of the spirit by the enablement of the spirit a strong man is a man that is enabled by the spirit what is governing your life your will your mind the mind is too weak it's too weak you require the enablement of the spirit you see only them that are led by the spirit You read to see the mighty men that David wrote. He raised many mighty men. According to scripture, he divided them into captains. Captain of 50, captain of 100, diverse kinds of captains. And they begin to put in their chronicles. I saw about 30, 38, 37 captain, mighty, mighty captain men that David rose begin to give us few understanding of few of them he talk about shama he talk about dodo he talk about Aki. he talk about elias these were men that were so weak but when david took them to the cave aduna he was able to empower and enable them they gained the supply and the strength of the immortals and they begin to walk Because you will only understand by faith. The Bible says by faith we understand that the whole world was framed. So if you try to use your understanding, you will hang along the path. It's faith that fashion your understanding. Not your understanding that fashion faith. Your understanding is unfruitful. Because how can a man hell a sword? According to scripture, he will do like this and 400 men will go down. How? Is that one sword again? If the scripture cannot lie and the scripture cannot be broken it was not a man that brought them down that man became a nation that man became a compendium of spirit he was so possessed by spirit we saw that a man can have legions of demons that means a man can also have the enablement of legions of angels jesus said i can beckon upon the father and he will send legions do you know how many is a legion go and find it on your own so when the man did like this, it was legions of angels that moved like this with him. That was what happened between Elijah, Elisha and his son in the spirit, Giazi. Because Giazi did not understand that Elijah, eh? Elisha is a captain in the spirit. He doesn't know that Elisha moved together with soldiers. He doesn't know. So in the days when army came to capture him, Elisha was confident. And the sun in the spirit begin to shake. Why? Because the sun of the sun in the spirit, his eyes are dark. He cannot be able to see. You see, doctors speak so much about the need for revelation and vision. Lack of vision kills faster than prayerlessness. In fact, lack of direction kills faster than prayerlessness. And direction is a product of vision and mission. And until his eyes were open, he would have been troubled. But immediately when his eyes was open, he began to dance. He began to dance Zambia dance. Because he knew that they that are for them are more than they that are against them. The problem we are having is that we are not seeing. So you are flying in the plane. And just because the plane do like this, you say, hey, we don't die. You never die. There are angels that can do like this too. Just because you are moving the car, the car did like this. And you, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Calm down. There are they that are for you. No believer is alone. No. He gave his angels charge over thee. He said, Are they no ministry spirit sent forth to minister to them who be heirs of salvation? 
it's because you think you are alone that's why you are weak you are not alone jesus christ was not alone in fact the bible says it is not good for a man to be alone please don't think about marriage alone it is not good for a man to be alone it means it's not really good for you to be alone you need a supply of heaven In the days when you are troubled, do you know that even in the dungeon, Jesus is there? When you find yourself in the midst of the ocean and you are about to die, it's not only mommy water that are there. There are angels of the rivers. There are angels of waters. They come upon the host of heaven and they will rise for you. In the days when mystery Babylon the great and the harlot, they were trying to swallow the man child that is about to be born. In the days of the warfare of the dragon, a man child was about to be born that will rule the nation. But yet again, a dragon was waiting for the woman to deliver the child so that he can eat the child. So the hope of the child and his destiny is already sabotaged before the child is born. And there is nothing the mother could do. Because as she ran, the dragon followed her. As she fly, the dragon. The Bible said she was giving wings to fly. The dragon followed her to her fly. But you see, when she now realized that she's not alone, the Bible said the earth begin to fight for her. And when the earth begin to fight for her, the dragon cannot survive it again. The ground can open and cover her. The same thing happened to the, the mother of Ishmael. She is in the desert about to die. She didn't know that there is water in the desert. When she beckoned upon God, water came out. That is how the Israelites survived. They passed through Erat and desert regions. And God supplied. God bring down manna from heaven. God bring that water from the rocks. You are not alone. But if you don't know, you will perish. Because you think you are alone. David knew he was not alone. And that is why he knew that when he go do like this, Goliath must go down. You think I'm standing alone is a lie. I didn't come alone. I come with entourage. I am an envoy. No messenger. No ambassador. Go to a nation alone. No. You have a security system that nobody can know. Some of them are diplomatic security systems. They are intelligence. They are secret service. Before a president come here, they must have sent people here like one week ago. And some of them will be hiding. Some of them will be among us. You will not even know. In fact, there are some angels attached to your life. You don't even know them. Not all of them will tell you that they are there. In the day when somebody wants to shoot God, the angel will hold a bullet and push it back like this. And you wonder, ah, ah. only God knows the amount of poison and how people have tried to kill us and we have not died. There are securities. When you see men die anyhow, it's because they do not understand that they are not alone. How can devil send people with demons and God will not send you with angels? If the devil eh, wants to walk upon somebody's life, if the devil wants to send somebody, eh, the devil will ensure that there are so many demons that will possess the person. So when the person moves, he's moving with legions of demons. And sometimes you are trying to cast them out and you are suffering. You with Jesus. Then how can you be sent by Jesus and you go alone? It's a lie. There are legions of angels that are also following you. Just that you are not aware. And when the prophet said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall. What he was trying to do that he was giving charge to the host. And at his command. Samson was not a strong man. He was just a man that has the supply and the help of spirit. It's not about the jab bow of an axe. No. It's about what, what you are not seeing eh, when he did his hand like this.
and they are bound to obey so long as the concentration is kept. Because strong men are men that kept their concentration. Because in the day when Samson loses concentration, when he rose up again, he just discovered that it's not about the jaw bow of an axe. In that day, even if you give him a sword, it's useless. Because his strength and dexterity in the war is not a factor of how much more he was cool in the military. It's a factor of the supply of the spirit. And so long that the spirit is not supplied unto him, he will fail. Whatever thing you get by prayer, it will require prayer to keep it. If you get the job by prayer, you must keep on praying to keep the job. If you get the husband by prayer, you must keep on praying to keep the husband. If you get the admission by prayer, you must keep on praying to keep it. The day you stop praying, you will fail. Why? Because you have lost your concentration. You are not strong. What made you strong was what you are doing. And because of what you are doing, you have enslaved heaven. You have, you have enslaved host. Because when a man begins to pray, he employs God. And God cannot be employed. So God will send his angels to do the biddings of a man. So when the when, when, when they say buy head prophet, buy head prophet, he say me buy head, eh? Bear. And you see, the bear don't have an option because a prophet is a man that has authority. They just have to come and enjoy the boys more. David mighty men slew many giants. The Bible says a day came, David was desiring to drink water in the camp of the Philistine. How can, why can't you drink the water here? What's the difference between the water here and the water there? He just wanted to just see how, how much mighty are these people. I cannot say. He just wanted to see, are they really not afraid? And before he was done talking, <laughs> you see, when you train people, whether in good or bad, they do times two of what you are training them to do. That's why if you see a lady that is very stubborn, maybe she learned it from her mother. If you see a boy that does not hear word, he's from his father. And sometimes you become worse than even the parent because you receive a double portion. So by the time you allow them to do good, they will do, do good times too. That's why if you give your wife wala, she will give you double wala. Why? Because you sow one seed, she will give you a bounty harvest. But if you give her just one percent love, she can give you plenty. You will be tired of the love. And that's how it works. Anything you sow, you will reap more. Because you see, you can't sow what do you plant? Mace. You can't sow one cup of mace. And get one cup. No, you should expect more. So David was able to sow some things in this man. So he should expect more. So before he was done talking, this man went. You know what it means for you to leave Zambia and go to America and go to White House and capture Joy Bidin and bring him to Zambia. I think no Zambia army can try that. But before David was done talking, his army have left the country. And they have stepped their feet into the camp. And they enter and they slay up. And they just fetch water. And they were still slaying, holding the water. And they bring it to David. Even David does not have that track record. When he saw the water, it was shocking. You see, these men are not normal men. Truly, God has raised mighty men out of you all. He said, this water has to be a sacrifice unto the Lord. I'm not worthy to partake of it. This is the blood of man. Because many of them came and their leg is broken. Some of them, they came. Oh, you thought the sword would not pierce them. There were blood around them. But they were willing to do the bidding of their master. Say, as a faithful soldier, you must endure hardship. He said, no man that wore it entangled himself with civilian affairs. No man that strive for mastery is crowned except his temperate in all things. All this moving here and there that we do is waste of time. Can you spend time with God for God to train you in school? 
Because sometimes you see yourself having encounters, fighting beasts, fighting this darkness, fighting that. You won't be delivered from that. It's part of your training. Until you win the war in the spirit, you can't win the war in the physical. Men that die in the spirit, die physically. All those attacks you are having at night. Eh? If you can't win those attacks, you can't win physically in life. Your breakthrough is tied to how much more you can fight and war in the spirit. If you war in the spirit and conquer, things will be easy on the face of the earth. We have fought many wars. The decoration upon you most times is a symbol of war. No soldier is crowned just like that. Every soldier is crowned when you go for war and come back. If you go and die, by the time you go, you fight war and come back, they put another star. You go and fight war, you come back, they put another star. You don't want to fight war. You want to be promoted. How? The mighty men of David were not mighty men by mouth. They have a track record of different kind of war they fought. You may think it's all about men. Let's move to the book of Judges. The book of Judges is the story of a tribe called the tribe of Dan. You see, among the sons of Jacob, each and every one of them have an ordination, right? When Jacob was about to die, he said, gather ye my sons, the book of Genesis, towards the end, that I may tell you what will befall, become of you. He first of all look at his son, Reuben. He said, Reuben, thou art the excellence of my strength. You are supposed to actually inherit the greatest of this. But you see, as unstable as waters, you have went into my couch and defiled it. As such, you will not excel. So, Jacob automatically plucked Reuben out of his heritage. So, Reuben was not relevant. It took another man of stature, Moses, to come. And the book of the throne on the Moses look upon Reuben. I don't know what Reuben did to Moses. He said, let Reuben live and let Reuben not die. He took away the cause out of him. Before Reuben began to be relevant. But among the many ordination upon them, of course, Judah was given the privilege to be the one that the scepter will come from. Is that okay now? Issachar had understanding of times and season. Each and every of the tribe had different kind of ordination. Levite are the problem. But you see, Dan are the first to as warriors. Everyone in the tribe of Dan is a warrior. The book of Judges was giving escapade of most of the operations of men and women from the tribe of Dan. In the days when God began to judge upon the face of the earth, we saw many key players in the book of Judges. We saw men like Odnir. We saw men like Jephthah. We saw men like Samson. But we began to see women in display. Women like Deborah. Women like Jael. Women begin to be included among the chronicles of warriors. It was never in time past in history. But it came to a point when the whole of Israel, Israel could not go for war until they beckon upon Deborah. The Bible says the time came when the highways and the byways were unoccupied because of the Philistines, because of all the kind of resistance. And somehow there was not a mother in Israel. And Deborah rose as a mother in Israel. It's not as if there were no mother in Israel. Everybody has a mother in Israel. But you see, the vacancy in the spirit for responsibility because true motherhood is also responsibility. There was no any spiritual mother or anybody that has any responsibility spiritually there. And they both have sold that vacancy. And because it's part of our ordination, she came into it. And from that very moment, everybody realized that they are motherless and fatherless, including the king. Because the king too have to go and look for Deborah. He said, Deborah, what should we do now? Can we still have women like Deborah in our time? That the king and the commander of army in chief will not go to war until they come and consult Deborah. I said, Deborah, what should we do? And until she gives a matching order, nobody will move. Those key players, we saw women like Jahir, 
In the days when Caesar was running, they were looking for her to kill him. A woman. I don't know the wisdom she used. She bring him into the inner chamber. And while he was yet again enjoying milk, she, she, <laughs> she struck the man dead. And what a whole army could not do, one woman did it. But you see, there was no Deborah eh, without the palm tree. What makes Deborah is the palm tree. The same thing, what makes Samuel, what makes Samson, eh, is the Zora and the Eshtahol. The Bible says anytime Samuel, Samson passed through the region of Zora and Eshtahol, he will feel a staring. There's an anointing that stirred up upon him when he passed through a region. He's talking about a secret place. That anytime he passed through the secret place, a staring come again for him to have more covenant with God again. The same way, the palm tree of Deborah is not just something that you should just remember. No, it was actually the place where Deborah is built. Because every woman in the cycle of Deborah has a sheet, a covering of the palm tree. The glory of Deborah is taken from her palm tree because her palm tree is a security of covering. It's the token of the covenant and the ordination of God upon her life. And she must always visit the palm tree for her to be equipped and know what to do. And that is why Deborah may be married to Labidot, but she's always found within the palm tree. And it is in those places they come to consult. Deborah, what should we do? And she will hack her upon the God of covenant. So blessed is the man that walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. So his delight shall be the Lord of Lords. Say, but he shall be like a tree planted by the riverside. He's talking about the palm tree. The Buddha was highly planted in God. But we are upon a time when women have lost their palm tree. And if the Boras lose their palm tree, they become prostitutes and twerkers. They become twerkers in their palace. They become dancers and strippers. When the Boras lose their palm tree, the best they can become is strippers. They become happening ladies in party. Go to party and see. The ladies that we believe that they are supposed to be the Boras. They are supposed to be mothers that rule the nations. Are the ones that are shaking like this. It's when the palm tree is no longer there. So what they find delight in is what cannot bring glory unto them. The glory of the Buddha comes from the palm tree. The same way, women like Esther. It was not just her beauty that brought her. No, she is a woman that really know God. You may say it's her beauty. The beauty brought her to the palace. But what kept her in the palace? It was prayer and fasting. Because the beauty brought her to the palace. But still in the palace, eh, she's been threatened. You may get the job by beauty. And see, it's not beauty that will keep the job. You better start praying and fasting. Because somebody will still come that is more beautiful than you. Because the beautiful ones are not yet born. Your beauty will not last forever. If all your glory is in the beauty, it will last forever. It's designed to fade away. And you see, pancake and masquerade and foundation and primer will save you. So all the pancake, the masquerade, the primer, it will not save you. There's a beauty in the glory until the glory covers you. This one will not last. Let me tell you, Vashti is the beautiful woman. The woman that as it Jesus, drop her for Esther. She was the beautiful woman. No king marry an ugly woman. So just know that Vashti was the beautiful woman. Her beauty brought her to the palace. Beauty brought Vashti to the palace. But in the day the king demanded her to do something she refused to do. He said, get out of here! He said, look for another person that is beautiful. And they brought, they brought Esther. 
Hadassah was not just beautiful. She's a woman of wisdom. She's a woman of prayer. She's a woman of fasting. You better learn that one and add it to your beauty. Because you see, the governor or the president of Zambia may marry because you are beautiful. But if you are not careful, one day you see the out of that place. There are, men, there are women that men cannot divorce. There are women that carry glory in heaven. So beyond their beauty, there is something they do to control the men in the spirit. You don't understand. See, your beauty will fade. It will fade away. Have you ever seen your grandmother? You will look like your grandmother in time. You will look like her. Your grandmother could not save her beauty. I saw one of, I saw one of those her grandmother. She's trying to put pancake mascara. Say, mommy, you are too old. It will save you. I'm trying to let you understand that there is beauty in the glory. But if you don't have the beauty in the glory, you will depend upon this natural beauty. And that one can't keep you. In the days when a verdict was put, let them annihilate Jews. Kingdom warriors need to rise. And at that moment, Deborah was one. Esther was one. In that day, we don't need beauty again. We need warriors of the kingdom. Esther said, gather everybody. Let everybody fast. Everybody fast. Let nobody eat. We will pray and fast for three days. I will go. If I perish, I perish. Thank God for our mentor, Mordecaiah. He let her understand the purpose why she is in the palace. Not the kind of people that we save today, tomorrow. They don't know why they are safe. Say, so you are in the palace for such a time as this. If you refuse to help us, God will bring help for Israel. But you too will perish. Because the plan was to start killing the Jews outside of the palace. Then later on, they will not kill the Jews inside the palace. And you see, the law of the medics and the patient is a terrible law. If you write it, you can't change it. You have to write another law to empower it. So when you say, let all the Jews be killed, and by adventure, they now find out that you, you are a king. And you are also a Jew. As a king, you will still be killed too. Because the law says all Jews will be killed. King, we discover that you are also a Jew. You too die. So the only way to go against that law is to empower another law. They don't change their law. And you don't go to see the king just like that. But a woman like Esther, when she began to pray, I know now you know from my teaching of yesterday what came upon her. It was the Shekinah glory. When she stayed and tarried, suddenly the Shekinah glory enveloped her. And when the Shekinah glory came upon her, she went into the king palace. Normally she should be killed, but he straight for the scepter. What the king never wanted to do, he granted it. Why? Because a woman that carried a glory beyond her beauty came. This is how you can influence your house and influence your territory. Not just with beauty, but with prayer and with fasting. And according to scripture, immediately that law was changed. They wrote another law to empower the Jews to fight. And the same person that plotted was killed. If Esther refused to pray, and fast with her beauty, she will be gone. Another beautiful woman will replace her. Auntie, your beauty is good. But you see, I would love to marry a woman that can heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out devils. I don't want to marry a beautiful woman. No. Because I know it doesn't last forever. How long can I keep the beauty? If it was your beauty that brought me to you. If you are not beautiful, I will look for another person. But what if it is the glory of God that I see? I will remain there so long as the glory is there. Young women, 
You can only keep your men by the glory. You see these men that are here, they are looking for eternal security. They are not looking for a woman that will come and be fighting with them. They need to see the glory. You are beautiful. That's why they admire you and go away. They are looking for a woman that can cast out devils, heal the sick, and raise the dead. I need a woman that when somebody say, I will kill you, she will say, my husband, don't worry, rest. This battle is for me. Me, I will pape, pape, not, not a woman that will carry pancake and masquerade and be say, honey, am I beautiful enough? No, go and pray. It's the glory. What you need is the glory of God. There's a glory you carry that men cannot resist you. No. There are men, there are women that men cannot divorce them. Because the man know that his, his, his elevation in this life is tied to you. How can he divorce you? When he is thinking about another woman, you will appear to him in his dream and slap him. Kai! can he divorce you when before he do something you have seen it in the spirit you say honey come i dreamt last night i saw you passing through liai park you went to liai park with a lady her name is this he will be afraid next time when he want to carry a woman he will say my wife is seeing me oh she see from the glory young ladies are you not tired of men coming to you every day and ask, sss, sss, baby, give me your phone number. Baby, give me your phone number. Baby, give me your phone number. Are you not tired? Why is it that when men see you, they can't see the glory of God? It's only phone number they see. It's because you don't have anything. Why will a man see you and all what he sees is your nakedness? Carry the glory of God. If a man see you, say, Kai! When will somebody come to you and say, young woman, I have seen the grace of God upon your life. I have seen the fire of God upon you. I have seen the glory of God. Can you lay your hands upon me? Every time it's, baby, your number, your number. Can you carry the glory of God that men can see you and say, pray for me. Can your husband kneel down and say, My wife, pray for me. I have seen a grace upon you. Those were women like Deborah and Esther. Young women, what you need is the glory of God. When you carry the glory of God, your husband can't say, Get out. Why would he say, Get out? Because when you go out, he will die. Because he knows that it is your prayer and your intercession that is keeping him. I need to marry a woman that can pray. So that in the days when I'm weak, eh, she can be strong. Your beauty will not last forever. Let me tell you the truth. If you are a woman that carry the grace and the power of God, even in your old age, people will come and need and say, pray for me. Pray for me. But if you don't carry the glory of God, when you are old, they will say, ah, mama, mama is a witch. Mama is a witch. Oh, mama is a witch. Go to the village. When you carry the glory of God, Mama cannot be a witch. You say, Mama is an elder in the spirit. Mama carry mantle. Mama carry grace. Let the mantle of Mama fall upon my head. It's the glory of God that define our ordination. And when you don't have the glory of God, you'll be naked. Are you men and women of the glory? We are living upon a time where we must be able to ascend the realms of glory. When you carry the glory of God in your office, when your Oga say, I will sack you tomorrow, you will say, Oga, you will die tomorrow. When you want to sack you, you at night, an angel will appear and say, Eh, you want to sack you? This one, no, this one is touch not. Say, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. 
When a man says, I want to sleep with you or I will not pass you in your school. He says, sir, give me just one day. You go and begin to pray. Papa, pete, papa, pete. An angel will appear and snap him. Kai, let your pastor. You don't sleep with everybody. Some people are not your mate. What you need is the glory of God. The glory of God is enough answer to any darkness in your life. When they say nobody can marry your family, suddenly you arise. You arise with the glory. And men, the men of caliber, not smokers and drunkards, not wayward men, men of substance begin to come and say, Oh lady, I have seen the grace of God upon your life. I have seen the glory around you. Can you marry me? Can you save me? Can you be my deliverer? Open your mouth and begin to pray. Ask the Lord for his glory. If you have the glory of God, ask him to shift you to another dimension. These are the days of the glory of God. These are the days of the power of God. You cannot be ordinary. You cannot be without the glory of God. If you desire the glory of God upon your life, come here and begin to cry to God. Come here and begin to cry. Failure is a lack of glory. Disappointment is a lack of glory. All kinds of delays is a lack of glory. Every kind of breakthrough in your life will happen by the glory of God. Come here and begin to cry. Ask the Lord, oh God, take not away your glory for me. Take not away your glory for me. Let my life not be a Let the glory of God be upon my life. Zambia must hear my voice. Lusaka must hear my voice. Africa must hear my voice. In the whole continent must hear my voice. Wale Bosana. The glory of my family. The glory of all my life. The my glory. Thou art my God. The lifter of my head. My glory. My glory. He said, My horn shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Christ the Lord for an anointed. A fresh oil. A fresh glory. Let the Lord sit into new glory. Into new paradigms in grace. Carry the glory of God. Carry the grace of God. Carry the glory of God. Carry the grace of God. Zambia must hear your voice. New Zaka must hear your voice. Africa must hear your voice. I refuse to be ordinary. 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 Praise the Lord. That's your business. Need the glory of God. That's your ministry. Need the glory of God. Everything you do need the glory of God. That your relationship need the glory of God. That your marriage need the glory of God. Zambia must change, Zimbabwe must change, Lusaka must change, South Africa must change, Ethiopia must change. My life cannot be like this. I cannot die like this. I cannot be useless like this. I cannot be wasted like this. No! No! Ah, Kapone Koba. I rise in glory. I mount up with wings. I elevate in the spirit. I go deeper. I go deeper. I expand on all sides. I break through at all sides. I shift at all sides. Let that gate be open. Say, lift up your head, oh ye gate. Lift up your head, oh ye gate. And be you open. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
Manenela Walenene Mualai Elene Mamunela Mamunene Mamunai Ate Boska Pray some more Nobody die in the place of prayer Nobody die in the place of prayer Oh Zambia pray Lusaka pray Your life can only change when you pray Bata baku beka Bata beka na kabaka kuka Aka bata boka kakaka boka kakakia kakaka kuka Aka bata bebe la tabaka kaskaba The heart of the Lord is coming upon men right now I see the power of God coming upon you right now Abeto maka inkakia to barakati katu kabaka dia katu Aka bata bebe la kabaka skaba dia to Aka bata beka the Lord is shifting you right now. I better not back up. I better not do it again. 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 The Lord is breathing upon you. The power of God is resting upon you even right now. There is an empowerment by the Spirit. There is an endowment by the Spirit. Carry the grace of God. Carry the glory of God. Carry the power of God. You cannot be empty like that. No. Wale boga in kata. I activate you in the spirit. I activate you in the spirit. I activate you in the spirit. I activate you. I activate you. I empower you. Zambia will change because of you. Lusaka will change because of you. That failure is broken. That failure is broken. Let the heart of the Lord touch you. From the back to the front to the side. Let the glory of God rest upon you. Yes. Mighty men must rise. Mighty women must rise. Mighty women must rise. I rise as a mighty man. I arise as a mighty woman. The Bible says, And the And the boy arise. And the boy arise. And the boy arise. Awake, awake, oh Deborah. Awake, awake, oh Deborah. I see the hand of the Lord coming upon women. The hand of the Lord coming upon women. He's empowering women right now. The Lord is empowering women right now. Pray. The angels of glory are being restoring. They are restoring your glory. They are restoring your glory. That which you have lost. The Lord is restoring it again. The Lord is restoring it again. Oh my God. Yes. The Lord is equipping you. The Lord is empowering you. That cycle of failure is over. That cycle of failure is over. That disappointment is over. That betrayal is over. Enough of the breakup. I've seen a lady here. You are breaking up several times. Enough of that breaking up. Enough of that breaking up. You will no longer be disappointed again. No. You cannot be disappointed again. Not again. Not again. Not again. The Lord is restoring the times that you have lost. The times and the seasons that you have lost God is restoring them the wasted days I see someone here your business have failed I hear the Lord said by the spirit of resurrection in the power of this glory your business is coming out of that man in me it's coming out it's coming out it's coming out even right now you will prosper again it was an attack that brought it down but the lord is bringing it up again by the glory of god i see some people here you are struggling in your marriage no peace the lord said i am restoring the peace even in the glory i am restoring the peace there shall be peace and harmony in your marriage peace and harmony in your home but let's who is this one I'm seeing right now? I'm seeing failure all over your life. Failure over your life is the lack of the glory of God. 
but I see a new glory covers you. I see a new glory covers you. That cycle of failure is over. That cycle of failure is over. The Lord is changing that verdict. The Lord is changing that verdict. The Lord is taking away that handwriting. Oh my God. I'm seeing some people here. You have gone through challenges. You have gone through hardship. You have gone through all kinds of things. The Lord said, it has been hard outside of my glory. Right now it's going to become easy in my glory. The glory take away your effort. It brings the effort and the strength of God. In the glory you don't struggle. Doors open on their own accord. All those closed doors are open now. All those closed doors are open now. I know they have rejected you. Go again. They can't reject you now. They can't. I see doors open. I am seeing in the spirit. An angel came into this auditorium right now. And I saw a mighty gate. And the angel held the gate. And threw it away. He said lift up the gate. Let my people march in. I see a righteous nation in marching. I see a righteous nation in marching. Out of Lusaka, out of Zambia, a mighty, mighty righteous nation. Righteous people, imagine. I see righteous people entering through a gate, entering through a gate. I see some of you here, you have been tied with chains and you are led as captives. You are led as captives. I see an angel come with a sword and break away the chain, and I see a glory being emerged. The Lord said, you are being delivered. You are being set free. Right now, go and dominate in the glory. The captivity is over. The captivity is over. The wilderness journey is over. The wilderness journey is over. I hear a sound in the spirit. I hear a voice in the spirit. He said, who is he that speak for a thing and is established when the Lord has not commanded his soul? The Lord say right now, begin to command my ordinances over your life. Even right now. Jesus. I see crowns here. I see crowns, crowns. I see those crowns resting upon men. I see those crowns resting upon men. And the Lord said, it's a symbol of rulership and kingship. I am restoring unto you your kingship in rulership. Many are being crowned princes. Many are being crowned princes. Lusaka can never remain the same. I see an ordination in the spirit even right now. God is ordaining you even right now. Apostle, I am seeing in the spirit a scepter given unto you. A scepter of rulership. And the Lord said, this is your 12th year anniversary. 12 is the number of government. The Lord said, I am giving unto you apostolic government for rulership. The Lord said, establishing a structure for you in Lusaka, out of the shores of Lusaka, beyond Zambia, even onto the shores of the borders of the nations. Your voice are rattling in the spirit. We are coming upon the time where is the days of the sons of God. There is an emergence, an emergence of the sons of God. As the glory covers you, I see the power of God coming upon you for increased level of manifestation. The Lord said, there shall be signs and wonders. There shall be miracles and deliverance. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. I see a sign following each and every one right now. It shall be a common place. It shall be a common place. It shall be a common place says the Lord the Lord said I will teach your hands to walk I will teach your hands to walk Jesus I see an angel came with a jar of oil I see an angel come with a jar of oil he's pouring that ointment upon people he's pouring that ointment upon people right now. They are being numbered. I see someone here 
you are into the psalmist you are a psalmist you hear songs the lord said i am giving voice unto your songs that you will begin to sing spiritual songs that we usher the body of christ in zambia in lusaka into a new season say by the river of babylon there we sat down where we wept as we remember Zion. i said the hidden nation as of us that we should sing the lord's song in a strange land we shall no longer cry again we shall no longer weep again the glory of the lord has come to restore to us our heritage that which has been lost is being restored even right now i see someone here your ministry has suffered you have gone through a lot of betrayers a lot of deniers and the betrays but the lord says now it shall no longer by your neighbor it shall be by his glory the lord said i will send unto you men i will send unto you men i will send unto you faithful men and i will give you a voice among the immortals i see strength being added to your voice i see strength being added to your voice i see someone here a woman your womb has been locked i don't know whether doctor said you cannot give birth in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i hear in the spirit somewhere must be better again prophet must be better in zambia in the name of jesus i unlock that womb I see a marriage, I see a celebration, I see a marriage, I see a celebration, I see a marriage, I see a celebration. The Lord said, You shall marry, you shall be celebrated, you shall be celebrated. I don't know it's gonna happen. You know how it's gonna happen. I don't even know. But the Lord said, I will provide the provision and the marriage shall be done. I saw you talking together with your fiance. How can this thing be? The Lord said, I will make the provision. In the glory, God makes availability. In the glory, God makes availability. I see a minister here. The Lord said, I'm granting unto you influence influence is a spirit that is the spirit of influence the lord said i am granting unto you influence the lord said i'm granting unto you influence and i see this like a garment cover you i see this like a garment cover you you know i'm seeing the grace of prayer and supplication rest upon men i'm sensing the grace of prayer and supplication resting upon men right now the grace of prayer as you live tonight you will find yourself praying and praying again and praying again and groaning again don't worry as soon as zion travel as soon as zion travel say can a nation be born in a day can a nation be born in a day he said yes as soon as zion traffic i see your destiny being better i see your destiny being better hey oh my god i am seeing in the vision right now a woman giving birth to a child and the lord said that the destiny and the life of men is being better to me right now but i saw like a miscarriage i saw like a miscarriage a miscarriage and the lord said he that told there have been a portion of destiny there have been miscarriage over time but the lord said right now there will no longer be miscarriage there will be self-delivery i see a revival in the next two years sweeping across the region of the region of lusaka a revival like a wild wind i see a wild wind moving around lusaka I see that wild wind coming i see a wild wind and i hear in the spirit the lord said i will be sending swift new messengers 
many giftings of the spirit have been unleashed giftings of the spirit have been released offices have been enabled by people god is releasing men many apostolic voice will rise many prophetic voice will rise many evangelists will rise from lusaka many psalmists many psalmists many kingdom warriors will rise watchers of the night keepers of the night daughters of covenant daughters of mysteries will rise I see an angel touching your tongue. An angel is touching your tongue. I see someone here. An angel is touching your tongue. The Lord said, I am purifying you. And I will give you word for season. And I will grant unto you all trans. All trans. All trans. The ability to communicate my counsel. All trans. Who is that person right now? Let the heart of the Lord come mightily upon you right now. You know so much you cannot give it expression. The Lord said, I will help your infirmity. I will help your infirmity. So that out of your belly can flow, can flow rivers of living waters. I see someone here. I see you live in Lusaka. The Lord say your time is over in Lusaka. You are living. You are living. You are traveling abroad. You are living. The Lord said your time is over here. I see a door open. And I see you move away. And the Lord said your season here is over. I have told you this. You have been disobedient. But the Lord said your season here is over. Says the Lord. I wait for you on the other side. Says the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord said I will lead you. I will guide you. I will lead you and I will guide you again. I see somebody here. The Lord said the set time to favor you has come. The set time to favor you has come. The set time. He said now is the set time to be favored. I call forth from the north to the south to the east and to the west where are the helpers where are the partners where are the destiny connectors you cannot be alone God will send unto you man I'm hearing in my spirit Jesus said I will appear to you I will appear to you. I will appear to you. I will reveal myself to you. I will reveal myself to you. Malesh Koba. Malesh Koba. I see someone here. You used to be very strong in the prophetic. But you have lost that gift. The Lord said, I'm restoring it. I'm restoring it. I'm restoring it. That oil is resting upon you even right now. I am restoring that prophetic gifting. Your eyes will be open now. Your ears will be open now. Even right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it. You used to hear voices before that used to guide you and lead you suddenly to stop. The Lord said, I'm restoring my guardianship, my leading for you. I'm restoring it. I don't know if this dreamer. You used to dream before. Every day you dream. Now you no longer dream again. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I see an angel. Wash your eyes with something. And the Lord said you shall see again. You shall dream again. You shall dream again. Out of the sorrows of Musaka, accurate men must rise, accurate women must rise. Jesus, I see the angels of glory all around the hall. I see the seraphims and the cherubims of glory. Many of you are weeping and crying. No, it's not an emotional thing. No, it's the angels of the Lord. They are clothing you with the glory. 
the atmosphere is thick and it's heavy if you are sick in your body right now begin to check yourself you are being healed you are being healed if you are sick in your body begin to check yourself now you are healed you are healed in the name of Jesus I pray every spirit that is not of God every spirit of drunkenness out of him now out of him now out of him now out of him now and we need the grace and the power of the Lord upon you right now from today let every appetite for drunkenness die let every desire for drunkenness die let your call in God let your ordination in God begin to be given expression Jesus appear to him show him that you love him again if you are sick in your body check yourself you can also come let Dr. Yohan pray for you he will just make a declaration over you and that's all if you are sick in your body doctor if you are sick in your body check yourself right now within the glory healing has been going on I see many pains going away I see partial blindness disappeared partial deafness gone osteoporosis arthritis and every kind of pretty condition is gone check yourself right now in this atmosphere of the glory towards your daughters. I thank you that you are greatly concerned for your own and that you always just want the best for us, God. Lord, I thank you now that by faith we can lay our hands on every sick person in this room, irrespective what spirit of infirmity they are battling what sickness or disease or demonic oppression God I thank you that we have the authority in the name of Jesus so right now Father we bind every spirit of infirmity every sickness every disease every demonic influence in their lives and we curse it in the name of Jesus we command it to die and to dry up from its roots and from its fruits in Jesus name and God we decree and declare wholeness of life in their bodies at this very moment as we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, we thank you for it, Father. But while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, the greatest miracle of healing that can ever take in place in your life 
if you are spiritually dead and you are quickened to eternal life and so if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior if you have not given your heart and your life to God the same glory that is in this place is here to restore and to revive and to quicken and so I want you to if you have not yet done that make your way to the front very quickly we want to pray with you before we're going to close this service it is the biggest decision you will ever make in your life but it will be the best decision you will ever make in your life so if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ I don't crank people up you know you know if you have done that and you know if you haven't done it. So I'm going to give you one more opportunity. One more opportunity. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, make your way to the front now. Thank you, my friend. Come on, give Jesus praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. Give him praise, give him praise. Come on, make a joyful noise in the house of the Lord. For he has done a marvelous thing. He has done a wonderful thing. Come on. Thank you, Father. Oh, Sakabalaya. Can you close the door, please? Close the door. As we are closing, close the door. Thank you. Shall we stand and close the service? What a joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. Has conquered. Jesus has conquered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus has conquered. Thank you. We are coming out of this place late. But sometimes when you follow time, you find out that the time that you want to leave the place, it is the time that God wants to download Himself on you. Sometimes it is good to break the protocol for the sake of the visitation of God. And I believe that it is for a good purpose that the Lord has kept us up to this time. So please, tomorrow we are ending our conference. In the morning, my brother Johan Roa will be taking us into the very deep topic that you cannot afford to miss from 9.30. And around 13, 14 hours, my brother Apostle Kephas will take us into yet another deeper program that will change your life. And then as we close around 18 hours, 19, we'll have the father of the land, Bishop Joy Makando. You'll be here to close and to bless us so that we are now allowed to move in the dimensions that God wants us to move in. So don't miss all these services 
if you will manage to attend even the two services or the three services, please make a date and be here. The glory, the Shekinah glory is taking place in this place. So please make sure you come to hear that word beyond the microphone. That word that God has for you. Your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keeps you. May the Lord cause his face shine upon you. Blessed is your coming in and more blessed is your going out. Whatever you followed, may God make sure that you get it. In Jesus' precious name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, after the main service, we will have the chance to have the servants of God and those who the Lord will allow to just have a chat with the men of God or to have one on one as the spirit allows you the ones that I'm going to allow if I say no don't hate me because they are all tired as well so please find time and be here I think our offices are now done. I believe that they are ready to be occupied. We might, we, we're going to use the offices. Servants of God, from the time you came, you never used these offices. They were prepared for you. So they are being done. I believe tonight they will be completely done. So tomorrow you must use them. So that... Um,